Mr. President, on another topic, last month a few of my colleagues and I had a memorable meeting with a former interim president of Venezuela, Juan Guaido. After a heroic and determined effort to bring some semblance of democracy and stability to the once proud nation of Venezuela, he and his young fa family fled in fear for their safety and future. He showed me the harrowing photos of his wife and two young daughters fleeing secretly and across a dangerous river into Colombia, a story that sadly isn't unique or even the worst I've heard. Under the current Maduro regime, Venezuela is a politically repressive failed state. I visited with this president in Caracas before the discredited 2018 election. And what I saw and what continues today is heartbreaking. There are people starving and fainting at work for malnutrition. Hospitals without electricity and basic medicines. Brutal political repression and torture and staggering corruption and the dismantling of what's left of that country's democracy. It's not surprising then, over the last decade, more than six million Venezuelans have fled their country in despair and fear, traveling to neighboring nations and some onward to the United States. Yesterday, I went to the Piotrowski Park Shelter in Chicago, and I met with a number of these Venezuelan immigrants, some of whom were bused into Chicago from Texas. It's not the first time I've sat down with these immigrants to hear their stories. The city of Chicago, like many other cities, are doing the best they can to provide good, humane care for these people and these families. I asked one woman about the journey that she made. She sat right next to me with three little boys, cutest kids you've ever seen, seven years old, five years old, and three years old. And she told me what it meant to take them through the jungles in Panama and to realize that at any moment they could perish. That's how desperate she was for freedom, how desperate she was to get to the United States. Hers is not a unique story. It's a story repeated over and over. I want to especially thank Kate Mayer and the Chicago Food Depository, Greater Chicago Food Depository, and the New Life Church, Matt Mateo, for his leadership in helping this woman's desperate family and so many other migrants arriving in Chicago. Previously, I, along with several colleagues, urged the previous administration and then President Biden to grant temporary protected status to these Venezuelans. TPS is a temporary immigration status provided to foreign nationals if returning to their country would pose a serious th threat to their safety because of ongoing conflict, environmental disaster, or other extraordinary conditions. It's the kind of common sense move self-confident nations and leaders take to demonstrate global leadership and compassion, one I was glad President Biden made early in his presidency. The original designation covered Venezuelans who arrived in the U.S. by March of 2021. Today I'm calling on the administration to make a similar designation for more recent Venezuelan arrivals. The Venezuelans I've met in Chicago will tell you that conditions have only worsened since 2021. A new TPS de designation would not provide permanent immigration status, but instead a measure of American decency and solidarity with those who face violence and chaos in Venezuela. Mr. President, I ask consent that this last statement be placed in a separate part in the record.